Welcome back to the fourth mission of the Valleys of Death campaign in Shock Force 2. We're leaving 1st Platoon and Combat Outpost Able for this mission and instead going out for the night with 2nd Platoon. Intelligence has located an important insurgent leader in this village and a local nation special forces from the Strike Commando Battalion, supported by Green Beret advisors, are moving in to take him out. 2nd Platoon's job is to provide security for the assassination mission by securing an outer perimeter, specifically by holding the north, east and west intersections. One platoon occupying the points of a triangle several hundred metres apart does not fill me with confidence. Splitting the platoon into equal sized elements gives three squad plus a team groups that aren't really capable of independent action whilst being too far away from one another to effectively mutually support. Splitting into less than three elements means that one object will go unsecured, and splitting into unequal elements means that one group will be significantly weaker than the others. On the plus side, it is 0300 and the sky is overcast, so it's pretty dark out there and 2nd Platoon's night vision equipment will give them a significant advantage against any enemy forces trying to get past them. Given that, I'm leaning on three equal elements. It seems likely that any enemy force trying to reinforce the village will come in on civilian vehicles like pickups, which should be easily dealt with. So, three equal-ish elements it is. The entire force is being helicoptered in, and 2nd Platoon is going to be put down on Elsie's Freya and Judith. The actual attack on the target, and the difficulty casualty intensive exercise of clearing buildings, is going to be carried out by the Commando Strike Battalion, Platoon and the Special Forces. I do have an Apache in support, which is going to kick things off by hitting the target building, then the Assault Force will move in from one side, where it has an LZ, blast into the ground floor, and clear the place out. I definitely want to attack from this side, because I'll be assaulting directly into the target building. I don't want to get into a long-winded firefight that's going to give the enemy time to react or give us reinforcements time to arrive. I want to hit that building as hard as possible, as fast as possible, and directly as possible. The tricky part is going to be crossing the open ground to get to the building, especially given the possibility of enemy positions in the nearby compounds, but the alternatives would be clearing intermediate positions, which seems equally risky. Hopefully the assault teams can get across using the darkness and the element of surprise. As the game starts, the three second platoon elements start to leave the LZs and head for their objectives. The platoon HQ, first squad and one M240 team have landed at LZ Freya and quickly moved to secure the west intersection, while second and third squads leave LZ Judith and head for the north and east intersections respectively. Their supporting teams, the other M240 team and a sniper team with an M110, occupy the ditch just outside LZ Judith, where they can cover the entrance to the target compound, stopping enemy forces from escaping or reinforcing it. The assault force moves up to the edge of the depression they landed in as the Apache hits the roof of the target building with a Hellfire missile. After a second missile goes completely off target, I call off the air support and kick off the assault. This might amuse some of you who've seen or heard me talk about how bad an idea it is to try and storm buildings. This is because storming buildings is usually a high casualty exercise, but there are a few things you can do to reduce your potential losses. As with any assault, one of the key things to consider is the ratio between the element detail to penetrate or infiltrate the objective and the base of fire element supporting it. For this one, I've gone for as small a force as I can really get away with a three-man assault team from one of the commando squads. The entire rest of the force is covering it, minus the commando breach team, which is following them up. The team almost makes it all the way to the target building before they get spotted, but when they do, events rapidly escalate. Pistol-armed insurgents take out one of the assault team not 10 meters away from the window, immediately come under fire from one of the Green Beret teams, then the assault team itself joins in, and a moment later they're hit by an RPG, closely followed by a hail of small arms fire and another missile. This wakes up the other insurgent teams in the building, who start to return fire, with one lucky burst taking out a member of the breach team, an RPG gunner, and a Green Beret. 
This is why I only sent a tiny force directly to the building. Now that the element of surprise has been lost and the enemy positions are revealed, I can get stuck in. The commandos target the center and left sections of the building, hammering them with AK, PK and RPG fire. This quickly suppresses the enemy, giving the breach team pinned down in the open a bit of breathing space to put their big boy pants on and join the lead element against the compound wall. Without letting up the supporting fire, the breach team blast away inside. Outside, the rest of the lead element squad catches up and follows them in, occupying the right hand section of the building while the breach team blasts into the centre. Inside, they stumble over the bodies of insurgents killed by all the supporting fire and quickly finish off a combatant hiding in the corner. After pausing to shoot up a contact across the compound near the entrance, the follow-up team joins them in the centre section and hoses down the final enemy in the left part of the building. With the bulk of the objective clear and the breach team inside out of demo charges, the final actions of the assault are undertaken by two of the Green Beret teams. One blasts its way into an extension of the left side of the building, gunning down an insurgent in civilian clothes, probably our target, and the second clears the gate building, confirming the enemy casualty we caused a few minutes earlier. Job done and dusted 10 minutes after the mission started. While all that was going on, 2nd Platoon didn't have an awful lot to do. Vehicle-borne IEDs turned up at the north and east intersections, but luckily these were quickly taken care of before they could detonate. Had I had teams directly on the objectives for the car bombs to run into and detonate, things could have been very different. A force of insurgents also approached through the woods in the east, only to be picked apart before they could even see what was shooting at them. After that, the enemy seems to withdraw, and with the Apache tenderizing some of the dead bodies out there, it's time for a ceasefire. The result is a minor victory. The enemy got some points for causing casualties, namely three commandos killed in action, three wounded, and a wounded Green Beret, who were all hit in the first 30 seconds of combat. Or in other words, they were all hit before all the supporting fire kicked in, which goes to show how important it is. 2nd Platoon, meanwhile, took no casualties, which is fine with me because I want them at full strength when they reinforce 1st Platoon at Outpost Able, and the insurgents lost 17 dead and 15 wounded, including the leader we were there for. Not a bad night's work. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.